Hello, I'm Multiprometheus1, and one of the most, I don't know what the word is, meme-worthy, meme-worthy, I guess, horror franchises of the last few years is definitely The Purge. When you first hear it, it sounds like an interesting concept. It's not that far into the future, and crime is almost non-existent in America. And that's because for one night a year, there is absolutely no law. Everything is legal. And in this annual event, known as The Purge, people are free to destroy, plunder, rape, and murder all they want. Usually when people talk about this, they say for one night a year all crime is legal, but I refuse to say that because if it's legal, it's not a crime. The Purge movies have a really strange reputation because on the one hand, this is an intriguing concept, but on the other hand, the execution is what kills it. This idea is perfect for some sort of black comedy or political satire, but instead they play it straight, as if they're trying to be this generation's 1984 or Brave New World, as if they're trying to say this could totally be our reality one day. Regardless of what you think of them, it cannot be denied that the Purge movies have had a significant impact on popular culture, to the point where almost everyone knows at least what the concept of the Purge is. For one night a year, Everything's legal, there's no law at all, that way people can vent all their violence and hatred and lust and everything, and they'll be super peaceful and happy the rest of the year. A unique and innovative concept. Or is it? I recently came across an episode of the original Star Trek series titled The Return of the Archons, in which the Enterprise crew come across a society that, spoiler alert, exists as part of a hive mind controlled by a computer named Landrew, and near the beginning of the episode, we see something the townspeople call quote-unquote festival, in which for 12 hours straight, everyone just loses their minds and runs amok all throughout the town, plundering, fighting, and yes, it's even implied raping. You can understand how, when watching this, my brain went, hey, wait a minute. Now the purpose of this video is not to say, eh, the purge ripped off Star Trek, that's not what I'm trying to say here. I mean, like, all of storytelling as a craft involves reusing concepts that other people have used before, and involves ripping people off. You literally cannot be an artist without doing that. But I just, I still think it's pretty interesting. The episode never really explains what this event is, it just kind of happens at the beginning of the episode and is hardly acknowledged again. Of course, later in the episode we find out about the whole hive mind computer thing, but for the most part the audience is left to their interpretation over what this festival is. And to me, it's pretty clear what they're implying. This computer, when trying to create a perfect society, realizes humans have violent and lustful tendencies and decides we need to vent them. And so it has everyone partake in this festival in which it has them run amok fighting and raping each other. It's basically the purge. And to see this concept explored in the super PC days of 1960s television is really interesting to me. So if this concept was being explored all the way back in the 60s, that raises some pretty interesting questions. Number one, who really was the first to introduce this idea? And number two, if this idea is so common in our culture and in our storytelling, does that mean it's actually possible that it'll happen one day? But both of these questions miss out on something really important. The fact that, in real life, this has already happened. There have been a whole bunch of different holidays and festivals over the years in which all kinds of ruffian rapscallion hooliganery was not only tolerated, but expected. From the Roman holiday of Saturnalia, to old Christmas traditions in England, yes, Christmas traditions, in which poor mobs would threaten rich people with violence unless they were served a feast, to literally anything Caligula ever did ever, you could definitely make an argument that these holidays or historical events were literally purges. They were events where people said, hey, once a year, let's all be horrible people for a night or two. And it was, once again, tolerated and expected. It really frustrates me when someone gets mad at a work of art for supposedly ripping off another. Yes, artists should be as creative as they can be, but expecting an artist to never use a concept that's been used before is ridiculous. Even Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare's most famous play, was based on popular Italian folk tales. So the next time you see something similar to something you've seen before, don't think, oh, they have the audacity to rip off that other thing, and instead focus on what they're doing different and how they're making that concept their own. We all have to copy somebody else at some point. It's inevitable. But the one thing we cannot copy from somebody else, and the one thing that will always be unique to our own work, is our own voice. Now, fortunately for me, I, I don't rip off anybody. 
There is nobody on this website that I rip off. There, there, there is nobody on the entirety of the internet that I take any influence from at all. Not even a little bit of influence. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. 